right, in this module, we're going to cover constants. So constants are just a slight variation off of variables, and hopefully you have covered the variable section already. If not, I have a link to the video to check that out. So let's jump into constants and see how they work in Swift. But they can be avoided, uh, and if they are avoided, it can create a lot of problems for the students or really any developer down the line. So it's important to focus in on using constants up front and really understanding the value of them. And that's what we'll do with this first topic. The second one is really to look at how do we create them. So we'll look at actually declaring them and creating them in Swift. We'll look at how we give them values, which is pretty simple. And then we're also gonna look at the compiler and how the compiler is our friend. Now, I'm not going to uh, focus a lot on the compiler as far as what it actually is or does in this point in the program. Uh, but I do want to just sort of introduce the concept, the name, um, and we'll uh, make a few analogies on how it helps us out. And I think over time, there'll just be a natural understanding of what the compiler is as we go through the course, rather than spending time just talking about the compiler itself. So um, what I thought I'd do with this one is change up the analogy a little bit. Um, here, what I want to do is let's introduce a, actually a new analogy for variables. So in the previous module or in the previous video, we did, mod, we did variables that were boxes. And what I'm doing now is changing it to say, well, let's use post-it notes. And the reason for that will become apparent in a second. So imagine that a post-it note is basically a variable. And then of each post-it note, we can put a name at the top of the post-it note to describe what we're going to write down on the note itself. In this case, uh, I'm saying the variable name is score, which also goes back to our previous video on using our coin game prospector uh, game that we were working on. So uh, we have the score uh, and we have a value there and its value is let's say 42. So we've gotten 42 coins so far. And those are written down on this post-it note. Now, suppose we wrote that value using a pencil. And the analogy is that I wrote it with a pencil, then you know what would that allow us to do? And so that would be a point to just open up a brief discussion with the students about what uh, we mean by writing it down with a pencil. And hopefully what they do is they say, well, let's see, pencils have erasers, and erasers mean that I could erase that value and I could rewrite it as a new value. And that's exactly kind of where we want to go with this. So, for example, the 42 gets erased, and now a new value, 43, is written down. So on a Post-it note, if we're using a pencil, that's how we work with uh, updating values on the Post-it note. Now, what if we use a marker? So again, back to the students, what do we think would happen if we used a marker? Well, given a marker is probably indelible and it's not erasable, um, it hopefully gives you a concept of it being permanent. And so in this case, when we write down 42 with a marker, it's not something that we can change. So the analogy here is that the pencil right here is basically something that can be erased and changed. Um, so it is the variable. And then the marker is something that is permanent and therefore is constant. So anytime we're talking about creating a variable and giving it a value, we're thinking about it in a pencil form. If we're creating a constant uh, and declaring that in Swift and giving it a value, we're doing it like a marker. And therefore, once we do that, we can't change it. So how do we feel about this? So this is another kind of interesting uh, aspect of dealing with constants and variables. So in this case, we've declared a variable called pi, and we've given it the number 3.14, and that is constant. That's something that never changes. So <clears throat> what's wrong with the analogy and what's wrong with the slide that I've just presented? And hopefully they catch on to the fact, well, this is something that should never change. That's a constant. But I used a pencil. And since I used a pencil, that implies that I could change it. And so that would be the inconsistency that hopefully we're looking for. So let's look at how we create a constant um, and how easy it is. So just like we did variables before, we have a name. We also have a value. 
And then we have, again, three things that we need to do. We need to uh, create it, we need to name it, and we need a value for it. And by the way, the key here for uh, constants is that we need to do this right at creation time. So not like we can declare it and then give it a value later on. We need to do it immediately when we declare it. So when we look at this, we say, well, okay, declaring a constant, here are the steps. So the steps are first that we're gonna start with let. So that is the keyword that they need to remember. Now, a lot of languages will do const, C-O-N-S-T, which is short for constant. Um, unfortunately, Swift did not choose that. They chose let. So var for variable, let for constant. And then we are going to follow it with our variable name. So here we follow it with pi. And then we say equals and how do we read this? So remember that one of the things we want to harp on is this equality is not saying that these two sides are equal. We're saying something else. So what was it that equal actually is meant to mean in this case, and how do we read it? So in this case, we read it as gets the value of, right? So this is how we actually read the equal sign in a statement like this. And then finally, we give it a value. In this case, it's 3.14, and that's what we have right here. So let's look at updating a value. So in the previous video, when we had vars or variables like we have here, we have var where we've declared it score equals one, and then later on we do a score equals two, and this was a way we were able to update the value to something new. Now. Let's look at this, is this legal in if we're using constants? So right now, for example, we've got this declared as var, pi 3.14, and then we come in on the second statement and we update its value to 3.1415. So the question I would pose is, is this legal? And the answer to the question is, yes, it is legal from a Swift standpoint. And the reason is, is that var was used here, and therefore it's uh, something that we can update, right? But if we used a let, so now we have a let here, the question is, is this legal? Is this something that we that, that is uh, allowed by the language? And the answer to that is no. And the reason is, is because this is a constant, you could not go in and assign a value here. And this is where we can sort of start to introduce the concept of our compilers, our friend, because it's going to see these things and flag them as something that we can't do right up front, um, and, and it'll be of value to us. Okay, so once uh, pi is set, it can never be changed again, so this statement is illegal. So let's consider why constants and the compiler are our friend. So let's consider this. Let's say that we want to write a, re a recipe or an algorithm to count through the integers from negative two through five, and we want to print out the count when we find the integer that is greater than our threshold value of three. So each time we check to see if the integer is greater than our threshold value, we will increment our count by one. So let's visualize this. So essentially what I have here is a list of numbers going from basically uh, negative two here all the way up to five. And we've discussed some potential variables, but two of them hopefully that came out of that discussion was we need a variable called count and we need a variable called threshold. And so I would ask, okay, given those, what are the initial values for that? So hopefully they come back with good suggestions. One of them is that the count is zero because we haven't started yet, so we're just starting at zero. And then the threshold that we want to get to is three. So we're looking for the first number that goes over the value of three. So how would this look visually? So first off, we would go and compare. So we'd start with that first number and we'd say is negative two, is it less than our threshold value of three? And if it is, we're done. But if it isn't, then what we need to do is increment our count by one. So now the count went from zero to one, and we need to do this, the whole operation again. But this time, 
we're going to look at the next number in the sequence. So now we look at negative one, compare it to three. We again determine that it's not greater, and so we increment our count to two, and then we keep going. So now we're looking at uh, the third number in the sequence, zero, zero is not greater than three, and so we increment the count again. So I won't bore you going through the whole thing, but eventually we get over here to four, which is greater than three. Our count would be at six at this point, and we now know that four is greater than three, so now we print out the six as our result. So six becomes the value of count. That's what we're gonna print out, and we're done. So let's keep going. So um, in the class, as an exercise, my thought is kids write out, in English, what we've just shown in a visualization, which will essentially be an algorithm. So write out the recipe if they can, like they would be writing it to a friend as far as a process to follow to actually solve this problem. Now, once they've done that, um, you can show those in class. People can discuss the different algorithms that they wrote. Not all algorithms are gonna be the same, but they still may be correct. What I've done is I've thrown an algorithm out here uh, that uh, is something that at least we can talk to to make the point. So in this scenario, we're saying uh, in our, our potential algorithm, we're assuming that there's a counter value and it's gonna start at zero. We're assuming our threshold value is at three. Um, we are starting with the first number at negative two. And then we have this thing called a checkpoint here. Don't worry about that yet. But what happens is we get into this area right here and we say, well, is the number greater than our threshold value? If it is, then we are gonna print the count and we're done. However, if it's not, we're gonna increment the counter, pick the next number in the sequence, and then go back to our checkpoint. So essentially, this right here sends us back to here in our uh, set of English statements, our recipe, if you will. And then we just do all of these in sequence. And only when this is true do we then print out. And by the way, that's when we're done. So that's the algorithm written out in English. Now. What I've done is I'm showing the algorithm again, and I've made one small change. And the question for this class is, can they figure out what the change is? Is this algorithm that I've just put up here correct? Is it the algorithm that we just looked at? And my guess is that most of the students are gonna say, yes, it looks identical. It looks like the same thing that we saw before, and it should work. And that would be the wrong answer. And the reason for that is that right here, we changed the variable that we were incrementing from count to threshold. So if I were to go back one, we would see here, here's count, the counter, incrementing the counter, but here we're saying threshold. Now you could say, well, you know, that's awfully subtle. And you would be right, it is very subtle, but this is exactly the types of things that we run into in programming where you're writing a complicated algorithm, you referred to the wrong variable, and now your algorithm doesn't work, but you don't know why. So this is where constants and the compiler are really gonna come in and help us to avoid these kinds of situations. So the Swift compiler is our friend and our partner in doing development, and that's one of the things I wanna harp on in this is because a lot of times um, students can get very frustrated with the compiler because the compiler is saying there's something wrong and they don't see it and why is it being so picky and all of that. But the reality is, is that by sticking to the rules of the language, your ability to write code that's successful is gonna be much higher. So in this case, um, I'm saying, okay, here, here is you. You are the coder, you're the developer, you're the software engineer. And you know what? What you're good at is being creative. So you're good at creating these algorithms. On the other hand, the compiler is your friend because the compiler is something that uh, is very good at following rules. So the compiler is not going to be creative. The compiler is not going to create an algorithm. Only you can do that. You're the one with the brain. You're the human with the creativity. But what a compiler can do is be very analytical about all of the swift rules that are out there and making sure that you're following all the rules. 
The rules are there to help you down the road. So that's what the compiler is going to do. And together, there's this partnership between you and the compiler to get it all working properly and be successful at doing a software program. So again, the message is don't be scared of the compiler. The compiler is your friend. Believe me, uh, after 30 years of experience doing development, there are languages that don't have compilers. There are interpreters and other ways of doing things. Uh, and you want compiled languages when you can find them and get them. And Swift is a compiled language. So, you know, how can we prevent the mistake? The mistake being that we had this threshold. So should the uh, variable threshold ever be allowed to be changed? I mean, that's a question. So again, what do the students think? The answer should be no, it should not be allowed. So how can we have our compiler partner help us find these errors? So what I've done is I've put uh, just a clip from the playground on uh, some code that's actually in, the, in Swift. Do not get hung up on the code. Uh, the, the, the code is not the issue here, but the point is, is right down here, we can see here's count equals count plus one. And if we also look up here, we see we have declared a threshold let, and we've declared the var count. And count got modified here. And that's totally legal because count is a var. But now if I look at changing the code here, if I change this code and inadvertently refer to threshold rather than count, I've now updated count but notice I get an error over here now, and it says, hey, the compiler, my buddy, my friend, is saying you can't do that or you shouldn't do that because you told me already that it was a let. You told me it was a constant. And so this is a bug that is being found by the compiler. It's making it very obvious to you, the developer, right up front, and that is really going to help us have an algorithm that works properly. So here you would say this value would never change. And here is the error. Our compiler friend keeps us out of trouble by giving us that error. So in summary, we did four things. We said, what are they? What are these constants and why do we need them? Hopefully you understand that at this point. We know how to create them. We know how to update their values or give them values. We know we can't update them, right? Because once they're given values, they're there forever. It's like using a marker. Uh, and finally, why is the compiler our friend? And help, why are constants our friend, right? The constants are our friend because if we had not declared threshold a constant, it would have allowed us to increment it in error. And therefore, that would not be good, and it would be a bug that we would have to go work and find out. So that's constants.